So traditionally, when we talk of machine learning, we talk about optimizing statistical and business metrics. Uh, but it turns out that there's a lot of other important factors to consider. For example, if you're in financial services or healthcare, uh, explainability and transparency might be very important. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the remaining part of my keynote, let me address a couple of issues that uh, uh, are important, which is uh, privacy and fairness. So first, privacy. Uh, so the idea here is uh, how can you build models that uh, preserve users' privacy? Uh, so th this is a very active area. Uh, and there's some fundamental building blocks that are emerging, including, for example, perhaps you can uh, build a model without exporting or sharing data. Perhaps you can use encryption. Or you might be able to inject noise somewhere along the stage of model building. So for example, in federated learning, um, you are able to benefit from building a shared model without uh, sharing data. So you retain data in your device or in your company server. And uh, you can collaborate with other companies and uh, build a shared, uh, more accurate model. Uh, this is a more, so somewhat of an advanced topic. And I think it's a work in progress in the sense that uh, we need more tools out in the open source. So Google has a lot of uh, federated learning deployed in production. So one technique that's, I think, really close to being accessible to average data scientists is differential privacy. So a lot of the libraries that are coming out don't necessarily address all of the models you want to use, but they should address enough of the basic models, including deep learning. And uh, the nice thing is uh, a lot of the tools that are emerging are accessible to anyone who's familiar with, for example, scikit-learn or TensorFlow. Chang Liu of uh, Georgian Partners will be giving a session at this conference which, where she'll announce a new tool that will make it possible for average data scientists to build differentially private models. There's also a growing number of researchers and entrepreneurs who are exploring the possibility of uh, uh, using machine learning against encrypted data. Um, so earlier this year, there were a couple of open source libraries for homomorphic encryption uh, that seem to have served as building blocks for these startups and, and uh, researchers. So the main thing here is that. Uh, these tend to be still slow, so these are still works in progress. But uh, a lot of people are working on this inter uh, intersection between encryption and machine learning. So let me uh, talk a little bit about fairness. So we've been using machine learning now, I would say, as a data science community since 2008. And with the resurgence of deep learning in 2011, there's a lot of interest in machine learning. But uh, as far as fairness, uh, I think a lot of the research has really come around the, the last two years, specifically starting around 2016. So just like privacy, there's some fundamental uh, building blocks for fairness. So actually, there's many, many different uh, ways you can statistically define fairness in machine learning. But they, they all seem to fall into these three buckets. So you First, you start with the notion of a protected at variable or protected attribute. So for example, age, race, or gender. And so one thing you might want to make sure is that uh, your machine learning model behaves the same uh, regardless of what group a person belongs to, uh, according to a protected attribute. Um, and there's also people who say that maybe you should avoid using any of these product, uh, protected attributes at all. <laughs> 